Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is Saturday, July the 10th, 2021. Many of you have mentioned to me that you want an update on my views on the Anthony Joshua versus Alexander Usyk fight. Let's talk about that, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now I expect, and I know the odds don't reflect this, I expect Usyk to win that fight. Right? I think Joshua is a major talent. I think he's a major talent. But I think Usyk is the superior talent. Let's address some of the narratives here. There's a narrative that Usyk, who has already beaten Joe Joyce, right? He's already beaten Joe Joyce in a quasi-professional bout, right? He's already beaten Derek Chisora, who style-wise is much more aggressive than Anthony Joshua. Right? There's the narrative out there that Usyk is too small for the heavyweight division. You're hearing that from people like Tyson Fury, a heavyweight who has problems against smaller fighters. Right? I believe Usyk, who gave Morat Gassiev his only loss, who gave Maris Bredis his only loss, who beat Tony Bellew, who then, of course, became a heavyweight and beat David Hay. Right? I believe that Usyk is a different talent level because of his ability to marry his skills, fighting with movement. Understand, Usyk also beat Michael Hunter, the fighter who beat Ustinov at heavyweight, right? You go through Usyk's history and you're going to notice that certain fighters, Murat Gassiev, very aggressive, more aggressive than Anthony Joshua, that certain fighters understood that Usyk was a different talent level. I'm going to encourage everyone here to Google Murat Gassiev's statements about Usyk right after the two fought. Right? Usyk can do things on the move that Anthony Joshua might be able to do standing still, but not on the move. So to me, Usyk has exactly the kind of style to beat Anthony Joshua, because Joshua, who has a good jab, who has an explosive left hook, can't marry that to movement. I want people to focus on Joshua's two fights against Andy Ruiz. The first fight, he doesn't move that much. He's dropped multiple times. So the second fight, Joshua is moving. That second fight is the fight where Joshua moves the most in his heavyweight career. <clears throat> but you'll notice there are different kinds of movement. In other words, as an Usyk or an Ali moves, they could hurt you while moving, right? So you have fights where guys are jumping in on these guys, and they're getting hit with hard punches. Usyk isn't tethered to the canvas, Right now, when Joshua moves against Andy Ruiz, who is not blessed with foot speed, right? Ruiz, fastest hands in the heavyweight division, not the fastest feet. You'll notice that Joshua, as he moves, really couldn't hurt Ruiz. Joshua lands some punches, but let's just say movement was foreign to him. This is something new. Joshua has played to his strengths 
for most of his career. He's a blessed puncher with both hands. He's physically bigger than most people. Eventually, he's going to land and hurt you. Right? What he hasn't developed is what Usyk has. The ability to deal with a hyper-aggressive Murat Gassiev at cruiser or Derek Chisora at heavy and to move in such a way that he's actually able to keep the other fighter off balance, win rounds. There's a threat of power. So, I understand that Joshua is immensely popular, especially with the judges. Like Deontay Wilder, there have been many fights, like Canelo. There have been many fights where after the fight, I've looked at the scorecards and I've thought, you know what, that's not how I would have scored it. Right? The Alexander Povetkin fight, for example. I encourage people to watch that fight. In the early rounds, it looks to me like Povetkin, who's moving, is winning the rounds. Looks to me like Povetkin can jump in. Povetkin is an ambush fighter. Povetkin could jump in and land on Joshua, then get back outside. Joshua seems a step slow. Right? Joshua is not blessed with above average hand speed. Right? Joshua doesn't look able to keep up with Povetkin. That fight changes on one short Joshua punch as Povetkin is on an ambush. Joshua's a puncher. This can happen. It can happen to Alexander Usyk. But if this fight is scored fairly, Usyk who beat Breedis in Breedis' backyard. Right? Usyk, in my opinion, should be the guy winning rounds on the scorecards. Joshua could land at any time. But just to understand, on my scorecard, I thought the Vladimir Klitschko fight hung in the balance. At the time, Joshua stopped that fight. I thought Povetkin was beating Joshua. At the time, Joshua stopped that fight. Right? You've had stretches in fights where Joshua has been vulnerable. Right? I thought Joshua in the middle of that Klitschko fight. Let's remember, he drops Klitschko. This is how fast fortunes can change. Klitschko gets off the canvas. There's still time left in the round. Go back and revisit. I believe it's the fifth round of that fight. You'll notice Joshua then tries to throw a bunch of left hooks. Count the hooks after Klitschko gets off the canvas. Klitschko survives all of them. Right? All of them. Because Joshua's a bit too obvious. Then Klitschko drops Joshua the very next round. When Joshua gets off the canvas, folks, he's tired. Not only is Joshua not a mover to me, but Joshua has stamina problems. And that's the kind of thing that an Usyk can exploit. In other words, even if Joshua lands a big shot on you, right? He's nervous about overextending himself. So people think that I was here kidding, that I have some agenda other than winning a bet. When I picked Kubrat Pulev, an older Kubrat Pulev, to beat Joshua, no, I was wrong on that fight. I plead guilty to that. But that fight's fascinating. Because I'm just telling you, when Joshua drops Pulev, Pulev is on the canvas and Pulev is badly hurt, right? Pulev gets off the canvas. At one point, he's trying to turn his back to Joshua, which is a big no-no in boxing. 
right? No, I'm just telling you. Had Pulev been fighting Sonny Liston, let's let's talk about guys with punches, guys who were closers. Had he been fighting Sonny Liston, had he been fighting Lennox Lewis, there is no way that that fight makes it to the second half of the fight. He's fighting Anthony Joshua. So even though Joshua is on top, has this opponent badly hurt, badly disoriented, Joshua is afraid. That's the word I'll use of overextending himself. Right? Where he is in his early 30s, he doesn't have the level of confidence to overextend himself. Even when he has an opponent badly hurt. Now I want people to realize that the fighter who he's fighting is elite. He too is an Olympic gold medalist. Understand, Usyk at a time when the cruiserweight division was spectacular, became the undisputed champion, right? He wins the Muhammad Ali trophy at cruiserweight. As I've said, if you look into his past and you see him against Joe Joyce, who granted has lifted his game after sparring with both Joshua and Tyson Fury, right? But understand, even in the Usyk fight, Joe Joyce has an excellent jab. And you'll notice the jab doesn't bother Usyk because Usyk is a guy who can move. He can neutralize the jab. There's, there are even times in the fight where Usyk is walking down Joe Joyce. For those keeping track, Joe Joyce is still unbeaten. Joe Joyce, of course, beat an unbeaten Daniel Dubois Joe Joyce is very much a part of the heavyweight picture. Also, understand the only thing preventing Joe Joyce from having won the gold medal in the Olympics was what I view as highly questionable scoring. Right? Joshua wins the gold medal at a London Olympics game. Right? You can imagine the fans for that finals were all hoping that Joshua would bring home the gold to the host country. Joe Joyce was on the road during the Olympics. I thought he beat, I believe it's Tony Yoka. I thought he beat it. The judges thought differently. That happens. Just to understand, in terms of the amateurs, there's not that much difference between Joshua and Joyce. I would argue between the two guys, Joshua has a pretty good jab. Joyce has the better jab. Well, just to understand, Usyk's already beaten Joyce. Right? Usyk can marry his attack to movement. Let me also point out, too, that Usyk's fluid. He can change hands. He doesn't do it that much. But just to understand, in terms of movement, there's a gap between the two. Also, if you think Usyk lacks power, how is it that Tony Bellew survived two fights against David Hay, one of the harder hitters I know of, with both hands, a guy who beat value for crying out loud? How's it that Tony Bellew survives two doses of David Hay, and get stopped. Get stopped by Usyk. So, you can play this fight one of two ways, right? I like Usyk to win. You're getting odds because, of course, Anthony Joshua is the favorite. Right? The heavyweight division is widely viewed as Joshua's division, not Usyk's division. Even though Usyk, historically, if you look at his height, 
is as big, if not bigger, than Sonny Liston. We're in an era of really big heavyweights, right? So people view Usyk as a cruiserweight fighting in the heavyweight division, right? So Joshua is favored. I'll concede. Joshua is a blessed puncher. He's one of the hardest punchers in the entire sport. Joshua has the punch advantage. My question to you is, what else does Joshua have? To win rounds against Usyk. If they're what I call slow rounds, where nobody gets knocked down, nobody staggers, nobody gets dazed and confused. If it's just a boxing round, who do you think's going to win those rounds? I'm going with the guy who beat Maris Breedis in Breedis' backyard. I'm going with the guy who was undisputed. Also, there's an issue about, you know, the Derek Chisora fight. Many people felt that Usyk got tired during that fight, right? That that fight was closer than it should have been. Now understand, when you're fighting Derek Chisora, Chisora is a guy who comes out so fast that he knocks down Joseph Parker early in the first round. Look at that film footage, right? Derek Chisora these days, there are no feeling out rounds. He's up in your face. He's throwing hard punches. He's trying to hurt you early in a fight. So ask yourself, how much energy are you going to spend just trying to stay away from Derek Chisora early in fights? Being on your back foot while you figure out the lay of the land. Now understand, and I know this is counterintuitive, it's easier to get through the early rounds against Anthony Joshua for a guy like Usyk who can move, right? Not Charles Martin, who meets two Joshua right hands, right? A guy who's trying to trade with Joshua. But for a guy who can move like Usyk, it's easier to get through the opening rounds against cautious Anthony Joshua than it is to get through the opening rounds against far more aggressive Derek Chisora, right? I know Chisora is older. I know Chisora, you know, got a tie against Parker and lost to Usyk, doesn't have the wins on his resume. Okay, I get all that. But understand, that's because Derek Chisora tires himself in the second half of fights. Getting through the first half against a rested Derek Chisora, folks, that takes a lot of effort. That takes a lot of effort. There is no place to hide. Usyk's already done that. Joshua, as you know, is cautious in the early rounds, isn't he? I know he has some early round KOs earlier in his career against guys standing right in front of him. But against guys who move, who can move even a little, right? The early rounds are a more slowly evolving situation. Revisit the Joseph Parker fight. By the way, Parker fights Joshua in Joshua's backyard. The ref doesn't allow the fighters to fight inside. Revisit that fight. So while Parker is outside, Parker goes the distance with Anthony Joshua. Right? Higher level competition against Anthony Joshua can go the distance against him. Andy Ruiz in their rematch. 
right, goes the distance against Anthony Joshua. So, if you're a daredevil, the bet I'm recommending is Usyk to win, hedged with Joshua by stoppage. If you're not a daredevil, the bet I'm recommending is the over. This way, you don't even have to worry about the scoring. You're just worried about the round. The over, right? Because I think Usyk's going to push this into the later rounds. I think Usyk is going to wait until Joshua tires a bit before he tries to close the show. Don't kid yourself. Usyk will have an opportunity against a guy who was bone tired in the middle of the Vladimir Klitschko fight. Usyk will have an opportunity to take advantage of Joshua before Joshua gets a second win. Right? The over gives you the win. If the fight goes over, regardless of the judges' scorecards, whoever wins the fight. And you can hedge that over with Joshua by stoppage. I'll concede. Joshua has the kind of power where if he opens up, if he decides he is the Sonny Liston who doesn't allow Floyd Patterson to make it to the second round in either of their two fights, he could do some damage. I just don't believe Anthony Joshua has a lot of Sonny Liston in him. Right? Let me also point out too, Sonny Liston, the first Ali fight. Right? Liston was too tethered to the canvas. Had absolutely no idea how to deal with Ali's movement. Ali's winning those rounds. Think about it. Ali is winning those rounds. Let me point out too, the first round Ali doesn't throw a punch for what? Like the first minute and a half of that first round. I would say Ali still wins that first round. Right? If Usyk plays his cards right, he could expose the movement advantage that he has. The ability to be able to move and to still throw hooks and hard shots. Something I don't feel Joshua is comfortable doing, right? I've noticed in the uh, Dominic Brazil fight, I noticed after Joshua had Brazil hurt, and by the way, that fight went over the over-under, right? Didn't last a long time, but that fight went over the over-under. I noticed after Joshua had Brazil hurt, that's when Joshua started moving a bit. That's when he had the confidence. That's when you noticed that there was an athlete there that could actually move, that had reflexes. You didn't know that before that moment in the fight. Let me point out the Dylan White fight, right? Now, let's be clear here. Dylan White wasn't too far removed from his drug suspension. Just like Vladimir Klitschko had been out of the ring for more than a year before he fought Joshua. Well, when Dylan White comes out, folks, I want folks to focus on the first minute of that fight. Right? Dylan White's too tethered to the pocket. But I would argue that Dylan White's winning that fight. That Joshua is tentative against the guy who beat him in the amateurs. Well, Joshua ends up getting a spectacular KO. Just imagine if Dylan White entering that fight knew he had a movement advantage on Anthony Joshua, was able to hit Joshua with that jab and to then move away, force Joshua to come find him, force Joshua who's unsure about his own stamina. Look at the Kubrat Pulet fight. Right? Force Joshua, who's unsure of his own stamina, to actually move and expend energy. Right? So, because I see a movement gap in this fight, just like there was one 
in the Alexander Povetkin fight. And because I know Usyk has beaten contender level heavyweights in the past. Right? L Let me also point out too that people are overemphasizing weight. Maris Breedis went to heavyweight, destroyed Manuel Char. Google that fight. Right? Historically. Historically. Guys have come up from lighter weights and have beaten these hard-hitting heavyweights. Does anyone here remember Ezard Charles beating Joe Lewis? Right? Joe was too slow, folks. Joe was too tethered to the canvas. Right? Let me just point out, too. Lewis was a better closer than Joshua. Right? Joe couldn't find Ezard Charles. Couldn't find him. Right? So we've forgotten history here. We seem to feel that, oh, a cruiserweight, who back in the day would be called a heavyweight. We've convinced ourselves that a cruiserweight can't compete at heavyweight, even when that cruiser has already beaten Joe Joyce and Derek Chisora. Let me also point out, too, that because of the political situation, from where Usyk's from, Usyk's had to fight many of the major fights in his career on the road. Where does he fight Tony Bellew? In the UK. Where does he fight Maris Breedis? In Latvia. Right? He's a guy who travels. So let me just say, he enters the ring, the British crowd is up in arms, they're cheering for their guy. For Usyk, that's business as usual. Right? The crowd's not going to throw him. You know what fighting on the road has gotten Usyk? An unbeaten record, an Olympic gold medal, undisputed status. A mandatory challenger slot at heavyweight. That's what it's gotten him. So you're asking me who's going to win a fight between superior movement and superior experience against a guy who was on the canvas multiple times against Andy Ruiz, who stayed outside of the pocket for the second fight. Right? A puncher staying outside of the pocket. Could you imagine Sonny Liston being afraid to be in the pocket against Andy Ruiz? Then, of course, he follows that up with a fight against Kubrat Pulev. I thought Pulev was going to win the fight. I'll just be blunt here. Right? But let's just say I'm a bit amazed. And it's a rough position to be in here. That Joshua supporters really believe that their guy has a clear-cut edge on everyone else in the heavyweight division. That a fight against a former undisputed cruiserweight champion who's still unbeaten is a foregone conclusion. Right, folks, compare Usyk's height to Mike Tyson's height to Joe Fraser's height. Compare Usyk's weight to Joe Fraser's weight for the first Ali fight. Right? Understand, just like Tyson Fury has a problem, and we know he has a problem, against smaller, more agile guys. Don't believe me? Just look at the Steve Cunningham film. Right? Just like we know he has a problem against smaller guys. Just understand that, you know, Joshua, first off, isn't fighting that much smaller a guy. Second, it's not outside the range of possibility that Joshua has a problem against more agile, smaller opponents. I'll just close with this. You know, if Billy Kahn just had more common sense because he really beat himself. 
he would have beaten Joe Lewis. Even Joe Lewis, after the fight, conceded that Billy Kahn was beating him. Right? That was a 15-round fight. So after the 12th round, right, Billy Kahn, who was dominating Joe Lewis, decides he's going to come in and leave no doubt. Right? Kahn was the light heavyweight champion at the time. Notice I didn't say cruiser. We're down at 175. Look up Lewis's record. Lewis is fighting at like 220, 230, right? You know, Lewis was big. That's when, of course, Lewis lands the shot, drops Billy Kahn, right? Folks, size is not the only criteria. I can bore you to death here talking about guys like Bob Fitzsimmons, right? Coming up to heavyweight, dropping the heavyweight champ, winning the title. Right? I could talk about Michael Spinks beating a dominant heavyweight champion. If you remember Larry Holmes, you know Holmes was dominant. Right? Michael Spinks beats him twice, at least according to the judges. I didn't think so, but let's say the fight was very close. Right? Guys have jumped up to heavyweight and have handled business. Here you're talking about a guy who's not jumping up from light heavy. He's jumping up from cruiser. Right? Just like Evander Holyfield did. Why? Why are people so obsessed with the size difference here? That might actually work in the undisputed former champion's favor. To sum up, I expect Dusik to win the fight. You can play it two ways as I see it. Usyk to win, hedged with Joshua by stoppage. Or the over, hedged with Joshua by stoppage. But understand the risk involved. If Anthony Joshua, who enters the ring, in my opinion, with a two-round advantage, just like Canelo does, just like Manny Pacquiao does, right, Errol Spence is kidding himself. If he thinks he's going to be the fan favorite, for that Manny Pacquiao fight, right? If the fight goes the distance and Anthony Joshua, who won some decisions by more than he should have, right? The Joseph Parker fight. If the judges, again, award Anthony Joshua, who is the cash cow in the heavyweight division, right? He's feeding a lot of people. If they give him the decision, you lose it all. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I understand a lot of people feel I have some special animus against Anthony Joshua. You know, I'm just another brother trying to make a profit, right? I just want to pick an outcome that delivers at the betting table, right? I know that's hard to believe since I know the public has put Joshua on the gold medal stand. Right? And I'm picking a guy who seems to be visiting the division, even though that's not the case. Even though history has shown time and time again that like Evander Holyfield, guys can actually gain weight. Roy Jones, James Tony, guys can gain weight and actually compete successfully in the heavyweight division. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.